Oh yeah, the wedge because if the wind changes, you can easily move just uh, move the stakes and reorient. So it works out pretty good. And it's easy to make because you only need uh, four stakes and one piece of cord. So it's a little easier to do. Most of these you only need four stakes for, but I put others in for uh, reasons. <laughs> Tons of tie outs. And that's what you want. You got, uh, the tie outs are better, I think, than the grommets, because grommets tend to, to rip or pull. So you can get a tarp, and you can do multiple things with your tarp if you're trying to really cut down. Uh, although I don't see the danger in bringing it, you know, an extra poncho. But sometimes people will hike and just use their tarp, and then if it starts to rain, they'll just throw it over them in their backpacks like a plush plotka, like a Russian rain cape. And just wear this during the day. And then when you get where you're going, you can make your type run. This never works. You always get wet. It runs down in rivlets, but... That's what you got. Yeah, that's what you got. I mean, if it's this, just get wet and warm up afterwards. All right, so I'll show you the wedge. Off of this point. And the easiest part of that is to find a corner. And then I'm going to <clears throat> put the wedge over this way, I guess, so you guys can see. And this is a good one, too, because you don't even have to know any knots. And if you've got your knots, your rope pre-tied with a loop, that's a good idea. This one also goes up really fast. So I'll just pretend I had a, a small loop pre-tied in my rope. So you got that little bowling, and I'm going to slip my uh, tie out through, and then if I put a stake through there, that won't come off. And then I just put it up to the tree, about as high as my shoulders, and I wrap my string around the tree. You're a tree hugger. Yep, tree hugger. And then you come around your stake, over it. Pull that tight and then over, and over, and over, and just figure eight around the stake. You don't have to know any knots for this one. We'll do knots in a little bit. Uh -huh. Just figure eight around that. No, it won't go anywhere. It won't go anywhere, but when I'm, I'm ready to run and get out, I can just pull this out, stuff it in the bag, and, and get out real quick. Mine is breaking up. You guys good with that? The knots? No knots? Mm -hmm. I will teach you knots. I brought practice cordage. Well, you, you do have to know the bowling. Yeah, if you don't have a loop. But let's say I didn't have a loop. Or my hands are frozen and I can't tie knots. And I'm trying to make a little shelter. I can fold the knot in half. And run that through there. Well, your hands are frozen, so they can't Well, kind of grip it. Just hold that in place. Hug the tree again. So I come around and then just start to figure eight over. And I just pin that in place. Pop in there. Wrap that in. Just keep figure eating. This is not as tight as it could be, but you get the idea. There. And then I've got my my stake pull the tree. See how sloppy it is. So it's better to have a loop. So if you don't know your loops. Your corners, though, yeah. right? Oh, there he is. There, there, there are in there. Yep, you could also do. No, oh, is the lark's head. Because <clears throat> I can just put that in the middle. So it's tied like that again. And then just run. Uh, keep hugging this tree. <laughs> and then just run your cord around. <clears throat> Keep it nice and tight and just figure eight around that state. This one's good if you're, if you're just being lazy and you don't want to tie knots. And then to lock it off, you're going to throw half inch, but you guys don't throw I'll show you. Find the other corner. Directly across from your tree. 
And these tarps are pretty big. Yeah, 10 by 10. And then I would find the other corner and I'm going to stake it out like this. All right, so it pulls. I'll show you a way to shorten this up, make it a little, little neater. tarp terminology so <clears throat> if your tarp is anchored to the ground I've pitched my tarp and if I have it up in the ground just like an awning that's called flying your tarp so if something say like over my hammock I, I have I, I have flied that tarp I don't know fly it's right flown I flew that tarp so I say hey somebody fly a tarp over my hammock right so that's up there and then this is a pitched uh, wedge this is uh, the basic wedge and you can see if if I had a dual sided tarp if the wind changed I could take that stake out and like uh, flip it over the other side and stake it down to kind of change its orientation you can also put another wedge off this side of the tree and clip the two together so you got like a big community then it's a couple ways you can dress this one up is to take another one of those yellow cords and a stake you grab this middle tie out and lift it up to a tree. See how much more space is in there that way? Shed the rain better. And then you can take two other stakes and put this corner in. I'll just do it. It's just a bag. Mm -hmm. Show you guys a couple of those. If I wanted to, if it was just me and I didn't want all this dead space down here for my gear, or the ground was really wet and I needed somewhere dry to set my stuff, I'll pull those stakes up from the back corner and do this. And just tuck that up. Now on the inside, I've got a little floor. tied loops in your cords. Mm -hmm. So I can take this and I put it over this toggle in the middle, same thing I did by the tree. Run it over and put a stake here there so it holds. And then I'll come back to a tree up here and just tie it around a tree and now you guys can see inside. Plenty of room. I tighten up those corners a bit. Let's see. That wouldn't be my choice for the night. <laughs> That'll give you a fun bouncy effect <laughs> while you're trying to sleep. It'll bounce from the bottom up and down. It's actually serving pretty well. It's like springy. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Gotta... It might actually work better. It might, yeah. And then I just tighten out you my... get the tension on it just right? Reset my stakes after I've tied it. And then you guys can see all the wonderful space I have. Come check out the inside. I got a little dry spot for my backpack I put my space blanket in there and then I can sleep I can put a fire over here and I can sleep right in here there's plenty of space even if I have night terrors <laughs> plenty of room plenty of space Henry and George give them some scale you two go in there and squat down so they can see it for scale reference yeah see all the space in there <laughs> And they're each six foot five. So she gets some proportion. I'm, I'm, I'm four foot three. Or four three. I missed you. What do you guys think? You like that? Sure. So this is the wedge. This is kind of a fancy wedge. I fixed it up a little bit. So uh, plenty of room there for two people. If you're if you're strangers, you can run gear down the middle and each stay to the side a little bit. That's fine. If you get cold, you can pile the gear on the outside <laughs> and make a new friend. 
All right, so you guys, um, we'll have to go back over it, but I'm trying now at the 101s, I'm trying to do knotless shelters. So people get frustrated with the knots. So instead of teaching you the, the six basic knots and we do that for an hour, then I turn you loose and never end now because condensation gets on the inside of the tarps too and then everything gets wet or clammy and if you're clammy you get colder faster um the only other drawback to these is you can't have a big fire because you can't have it close to the living tree or your tarp but you can bank up a small fire out here and i'm not above it i've made two small fires before around a, a tree like one there and one over there mm -hmm. when it was cold yeah two small fires out there and some mylar and this is pretty good for catching heat guys uh any questions about this one or you want to move on to the next one